So in regards to AI in the architecture world, we've kind of hit this big stagnation of where it's progressing. In terms of generative imagery AI, we've kind of reached the first big peak and you'll notice that when AI first started, the evolution of it was going crazy fast. We had all these new things coming out every month new feature, new, new way to use it, and more refined. And now I've noticed at the end of 2023, we've kind of reached this big stagnant. So I'm sure the next iterations, the next evolution of this will come next year. But while we're here, it's a really good opportunity for you to get kind of on top of this and see what were the best ways that actual architects have used this within the industry this year. So what we're gonna do, I think the best way that I've been using it within my firm is using it to create kind of fake architectural renders that look like actual renders, but they're actually just uh, AI generated. And you honestly can hardly tell a difference, especially if you put the image on a design report and then shrink it down and just put it on the bottom of the page. It really looks like just a real architectural render. So first off, we're gonna jump back into mid journey. I'm gonna show you the exact prompts that we've been using within the industry to create real architectural looking renders. So mind you, we're not taking an architectural model and turning it into an actual rendering as kind of that process has not even fully evolved yet. What we're doing is simply just creating kind of concept phase imagery. So let's hop right into Mid Journey and we'll get started at prompting. If you don't know how to use Mid Journey, I made a previous video of a complete beginner's guide to it. So we're just going to hop straight in. I'm assuming you know how to use it. So we'll go slash imagine. Now we need to set out our prompts in a specific way to give us this real um, architectural firm looking render. I think the best one to use is either version 5 or 5.1. 5.2 looks okay as well. Uh, you get some sometimes some weird looking artifacts within 5.2 because right? I think version 5 is slightly more conceptual. So I'm kind of interested in creating this kind of Bernard Shumi kind of look because I haven't done this before. When I'm working in my architecture firm, we use prompts specific to our own firm. So it searches all of the internet for image prompts that are based on images that we've produced in the past. So that creates our own kind of style and language. But for the sake of this, we're gonna try something new. We're gonna use yeah, Bernard Sumi's work. And we're gonna try and recreate something similar to some of his work. We'll make like a waterfront kind of park area. So I'm kind of curious to see what we can come up with. And we'll set it in Australia as well, because why not? So when you're writing a prompt, you usually start off with A and then kind of the main focus you want of it. So if we want to show a busy populated area, you just go a busy. And then we're wanting to make a waterfront park. So we'll go a busy waterfront park. So we'll go a busy waterfront park with a Bernard Sumi style structure throughout. We'll go style structure spanning the park and into the city. Then we can put a comma. This is a very loose prompt. Um, usually I make it way more specific than this, but I kind of want to let Mid Journey come up with and see what it does. And so we'll just put the location in. I'll just make this Brisbane, Australia. Actually, we'll make this one in Sydney. Actually, no, wait, I think a Bernard Shumi building would suit Melbourne more. So we'll just go Melbourne, Australia. And we'll put his name in again, Bernard Shumi. And maybe you can also add another architect and if you want, like, I'll add Renzo Piano's name into it as well. And a few more prompts such as architecture, architectural facade. They'll be for the surrounding of the area. We'll kind of generate a more architectural looking streetscape by using certain facades that have the keywords of architectural facades within it. And we'll just go busy park is another prompt. Now these last prompts are what's really going to make this into looking like an actual architectural render. So what I did originally was search top architecture rendering firms here. So we, you can search through these firms and then see which styles you like. So I don't really like this one. That's all right. So this one looks pretty cool. We want this style. So it's called brick visual. So we'll put that as a prompt. We'll go brick visual rendering. So my favorite rendering firm is Mer architectural rendering or I'm not sure what it's actually called. Here we go, Mer. So it's just called Mer, but if you just type in M-I-R, um, Mid Journey bot might not actually pick it up. So that's why I like just type in Mer architectural rendering and also just Mer rendering. So now it's gonna take all the renderings from this firm 
and kind of insert that kind of aspect of you know how architectural renders have a very specific look because they're rendered in a rendering software people have kind of gotten used to like all this kind of uncanny valley where it's not quite a super realistic image because you can tell that someone's um, separately rendered the actual building into this kind of photograph but that really kind of plays into the psychology when you're looking at these images so I'll add in K2 visual as well now we want to make a, a cinematic looking rendering so we'll use things such as cinematic cinematic framing rule of thirds ultra realistic 8K. In my original video, I went over and explained why we use things such as rule of thirds, ultra realistic, 8K. Those are all kind of just basic keywords to pull um, images from the internet that look really high definition and realistic. Set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. And then we'll try a version 5.2 for this. We'll see what it comes up with. So copy that. And let's see what it comes up with. So now looking at this, it's not quite what I had in mind because I really wanted to make an actual park that looks kind of like this. So we might be missing a few things and also I think it's taken that waterfront aspect a little bit too literally. But you can see it does kind of have a Melbourne looking cityscape in the background but some of these structures are too large and we want a more contemporary looking smaller structure. So we'll take our prompt. Maybe we'll take waterfront out of it for now. And we'll add red Bernard Sumi style structure. We'll go small. And because it's a deconstructivist style structure, we'll add in deconstructivism as a prompt. And maybe we'll take Renzo Piano out of it because I think that's influencing these buildings to be too large and kind of making the wrong scale that we're after. So we'll take Renzo Piano out. And now let's see what this comes up with. So now you can see we're getting some interesting results. You're definitely getting that an architectural rendering look from this. So if you were designing something like this, you could put these images along the bottom of your page and it would honestly just look like an actual kind of conceptual phase render. We'll try one more time. We'll add linear. We with a long linear. So I wanted to kind of span the street and go off into the distance. So a busy part for the long linear but now spanning the park and fading into the distant city. All right, I think this is getting the scale is kind of getting a bit off and way too large. So you just gotta keep on doing kind of a trial and error until you get what you want. We'll add some more contemporary structure in the style of... I'll remove all of this spanning the park. That makes it a bit more simple and easy for it to follow, so we'll try this. But if you just follow this kind of prompt structure, um, I think you will get the result you're looking for. One last thing I might try is actually using this image as a reference. So we take the image URL and paste it into our prompt. Then adding, well, I think this was the best one. So we'll try this. So adding the image to the beginning of the prompt plus what we had originally made. Let's see if this will work. And this can work with whatever rendering style and or firm style we were trying to go for. So if you want a specific architecture firm, just put that into your prompts and then it'll come out in that style. So I think this is a bit better. I quite like this one on the bottom right. It's a bit more of what I was thinking. So we can upscale number four. And there we go. So we've got this very firm style rendering of uh, the image we're trying to get. So this can be used in like design reports of the conceptualization phase. And it's a really handy tool if you know specifically how to use it and what you're trying to do with it.